I have been involved in music for quite a while. I generally look at the beginning of my music making as when I joined the band in fifth grade and somebody put a tuba in my hand for the first time. Um, but I have um, one of my aunties who will st straighten up and uh, actually get a little indignant because she'll say, you started music much earlier than that, sitting at the piano and playing every melody you hear heard, you could figure it out. And that was something, as long as there's a piano around me, I kind of can't stop. I think this is like tough with this right here. But there'll be no piano today. <laughs> and uh, growing up around the D.C. area, you know, I, I kind of, looking back on it, I see that there's this sort of split. I had my cultural life, and I had my academic life. Now, I wouldn't have thought of it that way, you know, as a fifth grader or in, in high school. I would have thought of it as, here's the stuff I learned in school, and here's the stuff I learned outside of school. And particularly being raised by a bunch of teachers and being around some great teachers, um, I know, you know, without knowing it, I was sort of indoctrinated into a culture thinking that what I learned in school was more important than what I learned outside of school. And, you know, particularly when it came to music, you know, there are certain ways to study things, and there's cer certain types of music, these are worthy of your attention, and the other ones are for fun, but this is the direction that your study should go. And um, so you'll, we'll, I'll talk about how that played out, you know, over the next, over the next few minutes. Um, but getting back to that idea of identity, being uh, multiracial and growing up in the D.C. area, having people that looked many different ways um, different than I am, than I look, uh, you know, there's always this sort of like trying to figure out, well, who am I in all that, particularly because for me, there's no one except for my sister who's just like me. So finding different things in my activities and uh, the friends I associate with and, and sort of sculpting who I am based on that. It's a clicker, so let's use the clicker. So I quite a bit enjoyed playing basketball. And these are the Air Jordans that came out when I was in ninth grade. And by that point, I was on the school team and had all these dreams of playing in college and my NBA career and all that was going to... Uh, was surely going to happen. Um, in fact, I'm wearing some Air Jordans right now, just to sort of continue to stay connected to that. Um, and these were the ones that came out, and when I look at these shoes, I see myself. I see that year. I see my friends. Um, I, I remember the games that I played in them, um, particularly a lot that were in the park. And that, playing basketball with my friends, that's a, that's a strong part of my, uh, I, w of my identity. I think of myself not like that now, but for sure I thought of myself like that then. Then I also spent time building decks, finishing basements, additions on houses, and uh, these are the, this is the footwear of choice. And um, that's a part of my identity, and that, 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 you know, summers outside and moving bricks and two by fours and, and uh, you know, making these structures with my hands and, and, and all, all that I learned doing that. And I thought of myself that way. This is me, you know, hardworking and, uh, you know, making a contribution to my neighborhood and, and having some extra dollars so that I could, you know, go to 7-Eleven and, and get comic books and Gatorade and things like that. <laughs> so, these things are separate. You know, my sort of recreational life and my work life. And there's the kind of very strong and separated things. This is for fun and this is what I do for work. And uh, as I got older, and uh, again, I'm, I stay uh, very much within my uh, identity with, with, with these shoes, uh, a friend of mine who I grew up and played basketball with, uh, he would give me these shoes as gifts from time to time because he knows how connected I felt. And these showed up in my life. Now, if you take a look, the design very much looks like the first one. However, you can see the connection between this construction boot and uh, when he first gave them to me, I actually kind of hated them because I didn't know what to, what to think, you know? It's like these parts of my life that are so separate, and, uh, but here they are put together as one thing. And the tops look like the athletic shoe. The bottoms are sturdy and strong and stiff like a, like a construction boot, though. So you can't play basketball in them. And I'm not going to get mud and concrete all over my Air Jordans. So what am I supposed to use these for? And I was kind of like dealing with that, and, and it wasn't finding its way naturally uh, into my brain until I realized at some point 
they're for neither. They're not for playing basketball and they're not for construction. Um, these, are, these are fashion, these are dress shoes. And uh, that's kind of a strange thing to think. You have an idea when I say a dress shoe, you have uh, you know, probably some specific things, and leather and maybe even patent leather and slip-ons and some of them tie up and what you use a dress shoe for. But as a young person growing up in the DC area and the 90s and the early part of the millennium, this becomes part of our social lexicon. Going out at night, you know, a dress shoe that I would wear to church doesn't fit what I would wear out to a club or a bar. This is more fitting. And it, it speaks to my connection to being an athlete in that culture and my connection to, you know, being this laborer and, you know, one of the people. And then also that playful uh, sort of thing where we're taking these uh, common man elements and then making them into something that's sort of elevated from that. You know, this is, this is a status thing, that I'm wearing Air Jordans, um, that I'm wearing construction boots, but I'm wearing them as fashion, not for the thing that they were made for to begin with. And I can look back and say part of that confusion and possibly even anger towards it, anger is kind of a strong word, the basketball shoes worked just fine. The construction boots worked just fine. Neither one of those were broken. Why did I need this new thing? But until I could connect with it, because it's for something else, because the whole idea of it is something else, it was, it was outside of what I could deal with. But once I connected with that idea, now these are some of my favorite shoes that I have. So how does that connect to music? I'm gonna play something that I le uh, first learned in a, in a concert band when I was uh, in high school. This is Molly on the Shore. This is the US Air Force Band, and uh, Percy Granger is the composer. Some nice woodwinds, and you hear these lines, and they're playing little interesting textures. But it very much sounds like, you know, you can picture them in their tuxedos and the conductor doing his thing. But it very much sounds like a concert band. So later on, I encountered this piece again. And the way that I encountered it struck me the same way that those shoes did, because something emerged that I didn't realize. I didn't realize that that music was based on uh, a more cultural movement, a, a thing that was disconnected from my academic life. First, the next time I heard it was done by the Richard Green Quartet, and it sounded more like this. freedom, a lot more playful. Again, I'm back to those shoes. And it's like, where does this live in a, in a buttoned up concert setting? And it doesn't. This is more like party music. Celebrating individuality and, uh, you know, a, a place and a time. So uh, that had a, quite an impact on me, because then I start looking back at all that concert music that I played, and I'm wondering, what am I not getting that is there in the music that, you know, perhaps a teacher of mine, all intentions of working on my technique and working on how to make these performances come off, they were missing that connection to that cultural part. They didn't know that it was supposed to be dance music. They didn't know that you're supposed to be outside at night, you know, eating something off a grill and, and, and dancing the night away. That's not what this music is in this other setting. We're going on a concert stage and we're going to play it precise and with our best possible tone. And, and in no way am I trying to dismiss the value of approaching music that way but I'm not connecting with the people from where the, the original part of where it came from. In fact, it's like it almost turns into a sterile exercise, in my opinion. So I want to learn how to get back to that. And uh, I think of a student that I had um, at a summer camp. And I heard before I walked in the room about this, this kid. He's, he's always doing something he's not supposed to be doing. He's always making noise. He's playing when he's not supposed to be playing. He's not playing what he's supposed to be playing. 
and we always have to you know, take the sticks from them or tell them to stop. And uh, you know, so I walk in the room, and I see the one brown child in the room. And uh, instead of hearing noise, though, to my ears, I was fortunate to have the cultural knowledge to realize he's playing uh, a, a DC drumming style called go-go. So we'll give you a little taste of that. This is Rare Essence. So heavy dance rhythm. So instead of taking the sticks from him, uh, as he's playing on the toms, hey. playing these rhythms, you can hear the little soul one. And so he's kicking it like that. I just pick up a bass drum mallet yeah, and give it a boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. And immediately, we know each other. I've just met this kid. We played maybe 10 seconds. But he knows I know him, and he knows me. And for the rest of the camp, he, if he got in trouble with somebody, he would look across the room to see if he was actually in trouble. And I'd be able to, sometimes I'd be like, and sometimes I'd be like. <laughs> but we were able to, there was, like a, there was like a mutual respect there. It's like we knew something that we knew no one else in the room knew, and we knew that it was important to each other. I knew it was important to him, he knew it was important to me, and as his instructor, I saw this you know, little munchkin who was wise beyond his years in this music, and clearly an expert, or as much expert as you can be at 10 years old but playing, like I said, just technique and style beyond what you'd expect um, from his age. So uh, back, to my, back to my journey, I'm going to music school and, again, approaching music. So Johann Sebastian Bach is something that, uh, it's unavoidable. It's, it's like one of the pillars that you know, keep our, music, our, you know, our study of music together. We, we, we go to it for phrasing and, and, and style and for for harmony and, and uh, all, so, so much information is packed into it. As a tuba player, uh, we go after the, the unaccompanied cello suites. And these are, are, are unaccompanied pieces that are based on French court dances. Um, so I can give a little, nope, not that one. <laughs> so the dance rhythms, you can't help but move. Prelude from the second suite. One instrument accompanying itself. The low notes are this. And then it reaches up, plays an accompaniment, with this melody singing. And then back to accompaniment. And more melodic. And we try to play these things on tuba, and you know, the one major problem with that is we have to breathe, and cellists don't have to breathe. <laughs> but another problem is, is I don't know much about what Bach's life was like, and I also don't know what he knows about French court music from a century before him. Could be possibly a lot. The problem is, is I don't know what it is. So I can approach these, uh, I can approach these pieces, you know, how my teachers tell me to. I can listen to recordings and try to emulate some things. But in the end, I don't feel like I have a personal connection to the composer or to the cultural movement of what the dances are. So I was encouraged by my teachers to figure out something that speaks more from me and something that fits on the tube a little better. And as an American, um, I found that I could get a lot of my cultural information from the blues. So I have constructed something in the style, my homage to Johann Sebastian Bach and my homage to Americans and to my life and my friends and my connections. But I'll, I'll just put this picture of this shoes back up so you can remember that these things are coming together. Like you don't normally hear uh, this sort of treatment for this instrument. Um, know that my influences are coming from centuries and across oceans and people I've never met before. And, uh, but I'm, this is my attempt to feel more connected.
So my final thing before I leave the stage, a student of mine tried to play that at a solo and ensemble festival, one uh, in a place where they had a, a two-tier system, so you do a regional round and then you do a state round. Took this piece in, got the highest marks, played it as a high school student. Again, these students that have just this special knowledge and they were able to do these things I wouldn't expect. And uh, even though he made it through with high marks, the judge told him it was inappropriate for that type of situation and he shouldn't play it at the state level. Um, and luckily he had the wherewithal to come to me and we talked about it and we actually got put him back on the Bach and then he played the Bach um, just to make sure that it was acceptable. But uh, to me, the thought that you know, there's nothing improvised in it, every note is written, a judge could sit and watch the page and critique his rhythm and, and, and uh, his harmonic inflection and all kinds of things he could have he uh, dug into, but instead since it sort of lived in that realm of where he, what he learned outside of school, somehow it was inappropriate. And uh, what a shame that he was not able to follow his passion and was discouraged from uh, connecting with his American culture. Um, so I hope that in the future uh, we start to solve that, particularly as we have an um, ever more diverse population in our uh, institutions of higher learning, that we can get more of that cultural knowledge by finding faculty members that are interested in these different cultural pockets from all around and let that, let that diversity find its way into the curriculum so that everyone can find their place and uh, feel like they are welcome and respected and known. So that's it. Thank you.